We hope you enjoy the St John's Derm Academy Dermatology Educational Video for Healthcare Professionals. I would quickly like to mention our disclaimer that the information in this video is based on up-to-date evidence and expert opinion at the time of its recording. It is intended to complement not to replace appropriate clinical training and national and local guidelines and principles of best practice should of course be adhered to. Professor Carsten Floor is a consultant dermatologist at the St John's Institute of Dermatology and Professor of Dermatology at King's College London. Dr Alexandra Santos is a reader and consultant in paediatric allergy at King's College London and the Evelina London Children's Hospital. Together, they will take you through a practical demonstration of skin prick testing. So we're going to tell you how um, skin prick testing is done. It's very simple, as you see, if you haven't done it before, and hopefully it'll encourage you to um, integrate this into your clinical practice. So here you see the equipment that we use. Allergen extract solutions alongside positive and negative control solutions, strips of paper towel, and then lancets as well. These are the positive and negative controls. The positive is histamine, which should induce a wheel in all patients. And the negative control is saline, which should not induce a wheel, of course, unless you've got demographism. Here are some examples um, of allergen solutions, some of which we're going to use in the demonstration. Standardized solutions to a wide range of allergens are available commercially for more label allergens, such as those found in fruits and vegetables. Fresh produce should be used. This red case stores all the allergens. In practice, we tend to keep the bottles in the case while we conduct the test to avoid them tipping over. And this is a close-up of the calibrated one millimeter lancet, which, is, which has a, sh a sharp tip. And the idea is that the epidermis is pre pierced superficially, so the allergen is pricked into the dermis. And note, this should not hurt and should not draw blood either. So sh children usually tolerate uh, skin prick testing very well. And what we usually say to children is, it's just a little prick, it's not painful, but it can be itchy afterwards. And this is a ruler. Um, so this is a ruler which has been specifically designed for reading skin prick test results with diameter circles to aid measurement of induced wheels. So we line up our patient exposing the forearm. They would have been asked not to have used any antihistamines. So for long-acting antihistamines, we usually ask avoidance for five days and 48 hours for short-acting ones. In practice, that often doesn't happen. And so when patients have not been able to stop the antihistamine for so long, we would do a positive control. And if that gives a decent wheel of three millimeters or larger, then we go ahead with full testing. Otherwise, it would be better to arrange for specific Ig testing uh, on the blood in such a situation. So before starting, we explain the procedure uh, to the patient. Um, so we usually say we will put some drops uh, on the skin and prick through very gently. It doesn't really hurt. It's not really painful, but it can be itchy afterwards. We can give some antihistamines and some cold compresses to alleviate the itch if necessary. So we also uh, warn uh, the patient for the rare, the very rare event of an allergic reaction. Uh, usually there is just an itchy wheel seen, but you need to make sure you do skin prick testing in a control situation where uh, resuscitation facilities uh, are available. Once we and the patient are happy to proceed, we mark the skin. Here, Alex is using a biro to label where she will apply each allergen to avoid any confusion regarding interpretation of the results later on. And generally you start with a negative control proximally and place the positive control at the most distal position. It's important to keep a decent distance of at least one centimeter, if not more, between skin prick test drops to avoid cross-contamination. Here my arm is marked up and ready to have the allergens dropped on. The arm should be in a flat, comfortable position so that the allergens do not run off the arm or into each other. 
Good practice to loosen all the bottles before starting, as that can be rather fiddly otherwise. One single um, drop of each allergen is carefully applied adjacent to the pen mark made previously. Be careful not to touch the dropper tip onto the skin. Once the allergens are all applied to the skin surface and with the patient holding their arm still, the skin is pricked gently with the lancet, held vertically, this is important, through the center of each droplet of allergen or the control. And each control or allergen requires a new lancet, so the allergens are not mixed. It's important that you apply the same pressure to the lancet each time because if you uh, press harder, then you get a stronger wheel. So the key thing here is that you do the skin prick testing in exactly the same way for each allergen. The strip of tissue is used to dab off the residual allergen or the control droplet. Dab and do not wipe because otherwise there's again a risk of cross-contamination. Whoops, there's one left, easily sorted with an extra dab with a new tissue. So now we set a timer for 15 minutes, uh, which is when the results should be read. This is Karsten's arm five minutes later, showing some early wheels developing. Increasing in size gradually, here seen around the 10 minute mark. Here we are 15 minutes later and the results can be read now. At first glance, there, it, it is clear that there's no reaction to the negative control, which is the far left uh, on the screen. And there's a good wheel at the side of the positive control on the far right, which means the test worked. The negative control is important as it excludes dermatographism, which if present makes the tests difficult to interpret. So seen here more closely, you can clearly distinguish raised wheels at the test site. So the wheels need to be measured and the measurements of each wheel recorded. It is useful to have a transparent ruler for this purpose, but it's not essential. So the house of smite wheel you can see uh, here uh, is around five uh, millimeters in diameter. Uh, test solutions are standardized to give a mean wheel of six millimeters. A wheel of three millimeters or more is generally considered to represent a positive response. Um, indicating sensitization to the allergen. So Karsten has a positive result to the positive control, as he should have, and Timothy Grass and house dust mite. To record the degree of the reaction, it can be useful to draw around the wheel to document the exact size in the clinical notes and to aid accurate measurement. Here, Alex is drawing around the wheel with a biro. In clinical practice, that isn't always done, but we often do it in, in research studies. Alex then applies a tape and gently rubs it onto the skin. Before lifting it off and sticking it onto the paper notes where the biro mark is transferred. And once the mark has been transferred to the paper notes, it can be measured. Typically the longest diameter is measured first and then the widest diameter perpendicular to this is measured. And you can see therefore that this wheel measures 12 by five millimeters. So 12 millimeters is the longest diameter, five the longest perpendicular to that line, and the documented size is the mean of these two measurements, in other words, 8.5, or you could just round it up to nine millimeters. So this is our uh, performa at Geisen St. Thomas's Hospital for documenting skin trick test uh, results. We record that uh, verbal consent uh, was taken. Uh, there's an option to record uh, whether the patient was on any antihistamine. And you can see the broad range of food um, allergens on the left uh, column, as well as positive and negative controls. And then some more food allergens and airborne allergens in the middle column. And then on the, on the column on the right, uh, we have some more air allergens and also some blank uh, lines to fill in with um, the patient's own um, 
produce um, and additional allergens to be tested, such as fresh, fresh fruits, plants and vegetables. Finally, the, this is a comparison a patient who showed a strong a positive control reaction, but negative results to all allergens tested and, of course, uh, to the negative control. We hope you have found this practical demonstration of skin prick testing useful. We have covered the equipment required, how to explain the procedure to a patient, how to perform skin prick testing, and how to measure, interpret, and record the results. To summarize the take home messages, a positive and negative control are always required. Ideally, avoid antihistamines before skin prick testing, and if this is not possible, check that the positive control induces a wheel of at least three millimeters before proceeding. The results should be read at 15 minutes. To document the size of the wheel, measure the longest diameter and the widest diameter perpendicular to it and take the mean of these two values. A positive response is a wheel of three millimeters or more, indicating sensitization to the allergen. Finally, I would just like to thank our sponsors at Derm Academy, Abvi, Almoral, Lily, Novartis, Sanofi and UCB. They don't have any influence over the content of these videos, but their support is hugely valuable to us. Thank you very much for watching.